This time on Dangerous Flights. I don't like how long these shadows are getting right now. Low temperatures. Pretty desolate, man. High risk. Turn it, turn it. You're good to go now. Turn it. Locking horns. Let's see. No, lean back. Lean back. Let me see what I'm doing. Over Iceland. And Corey and Pete Morning. meet a local legend. They call me Polar Man. Polar Man, outstanding. Let's roll. I was speaking thunder for the ring. Hey, hey, there we go. Oh, ah, starts to rumble. Are you kidding oh, me right now? You cry from the border. the border yeah, but Charlie, out there, we've got a rough running and we're gonna take it in close uh, Roger, to take it in an emergency Carrie and Marcio have one engine uh, we're gonna make it a shorter approach up. and a whole lot of trouble what we're planning for now is that stopping at any second let me see where you get the mixture so we see it it's full full now. This 2010 Cirrus has a nasty habit. Try it. Too much gas. No, we don't want full full. Bring it back a bit. Or too little. The engine threatens to quit. We haven't figured out this fuel mixture yet, and it's a real problem. You can ruin a piston engine like that if you're not doing it right. What did it do? Part of that. Did you give it more? Did you enrich it? I'm enriching now. OK. I think that's rough again. Yeah. It's an even rougher ride for Marcio. OK, I'm going to put it on. I'm going to bring the power back a little bit. It's his first time ever landing this single prop. Your mind starts to move in a million miles a second. You start to think about all the situations that can happen. You look at the airport, you sound the engine, look at the instruments, you look at the water, look at the airspeed, altitude. Everything is in your mind right now. Take control manually. You better go to town. With, with it running rough like this, I want to keep our altitude okay. in case we run out of... This ain't a jet. This an airplane. Sometimes stop. Marcio is a great jet pilot, but he's not used to flying single-engine airplanes. That's what I do. Yeah, I would still slow down your descent. I'm a propeller guy. I fly old, beat-up stuff, and I fly it all the time. So when things start going wrong in this plane, all right, I'm going to take over. OK, she's still running rough. I'm going to try the boost pump. That's worse. Let me try to boost pump off. Oh, up. Come on, man. Bend it, bend it in. I need Marcio to get this over land and fast. I'm not comfortable being this far out of water, this low, with that engine not. OK, I got just, it. I got I, it. It's still running rough. What if this engine quits right now? I do not have a second engine that will take me to the airport. Number 7, Johnny Alpha, runway C1, quick land, uh, surface wind, variable sea knots. Go ahead and I'll put a flap, put a flap. Flap spot. OK, when we have the runway made, I'm going to do some experimenting with this, all right? Uh, when we have the runway made. 500. Your props, pumps, or flaps are full. Your speed is 91. Looking good. I'm telling me this okay. speed's yep. up in 88. 80. 80. Holding steady. 80. 75. A little bit of a hill here, 71. Not too bad. Flaps coming up. Very nice, Marcio. Very, very nice. Very nice. Number seven, Charlie Alpha. One eighty. Oh, slow down there, Charlie. <laughs> I think uh, you might be ready to, uh, to move over. What do you think? You know, I haven't touched a single engine airplane in 20 years. And some guys like it and it's great and this and that. Yeah, good for them. I don't like it. You know, I'm not doing this because I have that adventure spirit. On this flight, Marcio's going to have to work for it. He can't just sit back, drink coffee, and do crossword puzzles. Man, that this engine. No, I, no, I think we're doing something wrong. A piston engine airplane, it should never run rough like that. People, let me in. 
You're gonna have to go faster than this if you're gonna get us inside. <laughs> Carrie and Marcio have pinned the first leg on an 11,000 kilometer haul. Next, they face a head-on collision with the fierce winter winds of the North Atlantic and bone-cracking temperatures of Canada's north. Then it's south to Sin City, where big spenders and slick little planes are a natural fit. Ah, lovely wick. <laughs> the rare nice day. So it would just take me a minute. How you doing there, old man? You little cramped up there. Put you on the rack and stretch you out. You know. How are you, Andrew? How are you doing? Are you well? Good to see you again. Yes, Good. I am. Marcio. All right. How are you? Long time no see, Andrew. Can't get better than this. I was really happy to see Andrew when we got off the plane, because he's been there forever, and he's seen it all. Don't take on a ferry flight if you've got a deadline to meet, because that's the real killer. If you need to know something, just ask Andrew. You know, this plane is really starting to piss me off a little bit. I can't quite seem to figure out the right power and mixture settings for descent of this thing. I'm getting a really rough running engine. And without the boost pump, it didn't do it. Every time I'm getting down to about 2,500 feet or so, going back close to Ilium. Dun, 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 dun. I think you've got to be brave and see what happens if you pull it a bit more. <laughs> Translation, take a chance and cut back on the gas. Of course, the engine could always quit. Should always, always listen to Andrew. Listen to Andrew. <laughs> the moral always, of the story is listen to listen Andrew. Listen to Andrew. It's called experience, I'm afraid. Right. But more, it went up to the eyes. I've no got time to run with 40 litres of ab gas to some chicken pot in the hangar. Andrew, I know him for years. Now, here's raw, and uh, he tells you exactly what it is. They're sport flyers. So uh, it's good to, every once in a while, share moments with your friends. Andrew, I have a... My new baby's coming in about uh, less than 10 days. Right. And I'm here with you. Good. Is it going to be a boy or a girl? A girl. A girl, you're sure? Second girl. Whoa. Above all, my wife is eight and a half months pregnant. And I have no time to spare. Does it make them as good looking as you? You betcha. <laughs> I have a picture right here. That's a little one, and i right. Look at that, one in the oven. That's right. Off we go. Marcio's got a pretty big deadline on this trip, so I'm really going to have to keep Marcio from trying to push us into making a dumb decision. Well, he's just got to remember that, you know, that all is, uh, it's, it's not a rush to get there because there's a baby going to be born. The important thing is to fly the airplane and go in the weather, which is conducive to getting there to see his baby born. They'll soon drive deep into Canada's north, where Corey and Pete are right now. What's the temperature? <sighs> Negative 19 degrees, sir. Yeah, it's not too bad. How about a little fresh air? Are you serious? Yeah. Open up. <laughs> OK. <laughs> That's some cold air, That's bro. some cold air, man. <laughs> Just yesterday, they left the heat of the deep south and were snared in a monster storm. In front of them, 3,000 kilometers of frozen ocean and a rendezvous with a high-risk runway in the French Alps. They'll bank down into Kenya, where the 1990 caravan gets a new life flying air safaris. The airspeed's looking good. Right now, the only wildlife they're likely to see on the road again. Our hungry polar bears. All right, well, here goes my first first. Never been north of Goose Bay, Canada. That is fantastic. I've flown across the Arctic a lot. It's never a ho-hum trip, ever. It's different every single time and very dangerous. Do you have any idea how cold it's going to be in Colliwit? No. Uh, Goose Bay is the farthest north I've been. Do you have any idea what you're doing up here? I'm learning every second. He has a reputation in the aviation world. He's a test pilot. He races airplanes. He's flown all over the world, and he's going to be my mentor on this trip. Would you care for some nourishment? What do we have on the menu today? We have some cranberries. We have some snack bars. Original beef jerky. That's amazing. Lunch for champions. Dude, it is crazy out there. There is 
Nothing, nothing, nothing. That is correct. It is absolutely beautiful flying over the Arctic. And you're taking pictures, you're looking at the sunset, and it's just gorgeous. And then you look down like, holy shit, if we lost an engine, there's nowhere to land. Nowhere. We'd die from hypothermia by the time anyone got to us. The real question is, who's going to eat who first? <laughs> there will be no eating of this pilot. <laughs> and we're not going to be out here long enough to eat to eat people. To be a good ferry pilot, number one, you have to be a little crazy. We're taking small airplanes to places they are not meant to go. And to deliver this caravan to Kenya, there's just one way. Short hauls over risky terrain. You know, we're taking a low and slow airplane across the North Atlantic in February. Are you kidding me? There's nothing else that needs to be said. Minus 31. Oh, pretty desolate, man. Very desolate. I don't like how long these shadows are getting right now. We still have two hours to go. Not liking that at all. And we're only doing 130 knots. Obviously, it'll speed up a little bit. Or speed up a lot of bit. It's just not a good idea in this single-engine airplane to be flying in the Arctic at night. Flying at night is completely different. There's no lights on the ground. You lose your horizon. You really have no depth perception, and you have to be extremely careful. If we did go down, how long do you think it would take him for him to come find us? We would definitely prepare for 24 hours. It would be a long 24 hours, man. Yep. Pretty scary. That'd be very scary. That sun's getting low, Super P. No, I don't like it. It is getting low. Now that looks like some cold ass water, man. Yeah, I'd rather not think about it. Just ignore the truth. You could fly right into the ground if you weren't on your instruments here. Yeah. There's no depth perception. I don't really want to die today. All right, let's not do that then. The Glenwood Lifestyle of International Ferry Pilots. Looks like we got reasonably decent weather. Reasonably decent, that's it. Reasonably decent. We're heading up from Scotland up to Iceland today. It's about 600 and some miles. If we have to ditch, the North Atlantic is really cold this time of year. All right. So what kind of rafts do you have for us this year? Ones that float, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> aye, aye. Right, we'll go and get the boats. If you go down in the North Atlantic um, and you're 300 miles from the destination, then you're going to have to get into a boat pretty quickly. There we go. This raft is maybe 13 kilograms, but it's all down to what you want. I mean, this is the Rolls Royce. The North Atlantic in the wintertime, I want the best, biggest raft they got available so they can find me, and when they find me, I'm still gonna be alive. <laughs> got some suits for us, too. Couple here. You gotta, you gotta ex- you request the large one? Or did it do? Well, well, this one we got specially for you. Jumbo! <laughs> I love it. All right, excellent. I love it. I love it. Jumbo's my name. <laughs> <laughs> is this the first time you ever wore one of these? No. So, well, first time that I, ac I actually... Put it on? Yeah, because the other one didn't, didn't fit. This is not going to be pretty. So even if we can get into the raft, if you're not wearing your survival suit, you'll probably die of hypothermia because you'd be so cold. So the suits are essential. It's looking good. OK. OK, chin up. Chin way back. Oh! I help with the, with the shoes. <laughs> They're not made for uh, hiking. OK, let's see if we can get this baby. Okay, I think that's as good we're gonna get. Okay. Okay, this doesn't look like it. It's horrible. 
Some ferry pilots don't use them because they're fatalists. They figure, if I go in, I'm going to be dead anyway, so why waste the money and the space in the plane? But I'm an optimist. I'm going to survive that crash and have a hell of a story for my kids. But before that happens, Carrie has one hell of an update for the other pilot in his family. Hello? Hey, Claire. Hey, Dad, what's up? So, uh, you've been practicing your Spanish real hard? Why? You know, I've been telling Claire stories about ferry flying for years and years, and she's always dreamed about coming on a flight with me. The Uruguay trip got pushed back a couple days, and that means we're not leaving until after your finals are done, which means... <laughs> really? You're going to be my co-pilot on the Uruguay trip. Woohoo! So I'm coming. Like, I can come on the trip. Yeah, it's awesome. I think it's going to work out really good. Ooh, yeah, baby, I'm going to Uruguay. <laughs> I'm so pumped. Like, I didn't think this was going to happen. I thought for sure my finals were going to get in the way. We we're going to have to leave too early and I wouldn't make it. But I'm seriously so stoked right now. And I'm officially going to be the co pilot. <laughs> but first, Carrie has to survive this trip. Okay, Marcio, here's the plan if we go in the water. In the icy Atlantic, this neoprene shell will buy them about two hours. Without it, you might last 15 minutes. We're going to get out, meet at the tail of the airplane. The tail should float the longest, because the heavy engine will put the tail down, all right? Grab it on the tail, hang on. Do not inflate the raft until I'm with you. Because if you inflate that raft, you're going for a ride, and I probably can't catch you, all right? You have to know your limitations. And uh, I am pretty sure I'm out of my comfort zone finding this little thing right now. It just uh, gives that a uh, non-reliable sensation. Eight November Tango, you're clear to Calia Airport for the approach. Clear to Calia with an approach. Uh, eight November Tango, thanks. After eight four November. hours of flying, Corey and Pete now face a night landing. We need to get onto the ground quick. They just couldn't push this heavy beast any faster. Let's go, let's go, Rhino. I'm on super random. Prop is where you want it. Prop is set. Uh, flaps and uh, lights. Lights coming on. We're all counting on you. Anybody bring their ice skates? This is bad. Be uh, tentative coming in here, okay, boss? Pete's no stranger to this airstrip. Back it up with the glide slope. Don't get low. But this time... And we're good. His captain in training stick handles it. The landing's not pretty. That's what we call a bounce. <laughs> but in these conditions, it's a pass. My god, I can't believe I'm here without a hat or anything for my ears. Wear a headset for him. I'm thinking about it, trust me. This is good. Don't get far. You're making it further to walk. Okay, so just park So here. stop. Yeah. Right here? So stop. Yeah. Get her shit out. And run. Run. That's freezing. For f sake. It is freezing. We land in a Calouette and we get out of the airplane and right instantly your whole body is frozen. Breathing hurts, your nostrils freeze up. Right then I was like, oh my God, I'm so, I'm so not prepared again. <sighs> like everything is cold. Like exposed skin freezes in two minutes. Holy cow, your nostrils freeze just breathing. Pull all of our liquids in the back. Okay. It's gonna take forever to heat this thing up in the morning. Okay, plane secure. We gotta get out of this. Oh, that's a cipher sewer eyes. Arctic survival store. <laughs> that's perfect. It's open. Yes. We got hats. Corey, check it out. What do you think, Corey? <laughs> <laughs> I think you should wear it flying the airplane. <laughs> well, that's something we're getting right here. I'm thinking of this. It's called the Guardian. Should we get matching ones? 
Yeah, I don't care. I'm so cold. It's perfect. Let's get it. How's it look? Looks all right. Just all right. OK, it's for both of those. I can't hear anything with this. All right, then I'm not going to listen to all your stories. I know. Reverse. I cut my story short. What's going on here? We turn our head, and there's this guy with a mask on, his beard sticking out. It's all frosted up. He barely has just like a long sleeve shirt on, big gloves, and he's just storming down the sidewalk. And we're like, who's that? And he's like, well, he believes he's a real life superhero. They call me Polar Man. Polar Man, outstanding. Polar Man? Yeah. I'm Corey. Nice to meet you, Polar Man. Yeah. Awesome. So you live up here, then I take yeah, it. Yeah, I do. Cool. How'd you get the nickname Polar Man? Um, it just. I can wish down extreme cold temperatures. But I can't. Yeah. I'm ready to get to some warmth. <laughs> <laughs> We're cold right now. <laughs> You're not used to it. No. At one point, he grabbed up a bunch of snow and put snow down the back of his shirt. <laughs> no. Yeah. Oh, take that out. Why? That's cold. <laughs> I think you have to be a little bit crazy to live in that cold Arctic anyway. Nice to meet you, Polar Man. You too. Nice to meet you, buddy. Yeah. Be good. You too. How cool is this, dude? He's got to take a look, no matter how cold it is. It's pretty awesome. Well, it's amazing. When you're up in the air, you look down, it looks all flat. Like you just it's like lost smooth. an engine, you come down, and, and this, is, this yeah. is gnarly. It is gnarly. I mean, that would be like hitting a cement wall. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You look out there, and I start questioning, <laughs> is this the smartest thing to do? Two beautiful kids at home. There's a reason 95% of the pilots won't do this. OK, let's put this thing here on the side. It's here, and this battery go there. For a six foot four inch guy like Marcio, it's like squeezing a semi truck into a single car garage. Okay. The only problem is, if we're going down, I have to release my seat belt to put this arm and close the suit. And then I'll be without my seat belt. Today, Marcio and Carrie are tackling 1,200 kilometers over open ocean to Iceland. So now for takeoff, we're looking for a fuel flow at about 40, way the hell up here. Okay. They're taking Andrew's advice to feed their rough running engine less gas. This better work. But it's risky. If it's not done correctly, you could buy this engine in a heartbeat. You gonna take off or you want me to? Here you go. You got your... I look at the, the, the numbers. Okay, let's go conquer the North Atlantic. All right. If a ferry pilot would only fly airplanes that are absolutely perfect... I was like, yeah, a little bit. A bit. He would never get anywhere. There's no such thing as a perfect airplane. You just have to manage the problems as best you can and make your decision. November 5P7, Charlie Alpha, Roger, climb flight level 240 and squawk I-10. To fly faster and farther, they climb to where the air is thinner. This is level uh, 240. 24,000 feet almost as high as this single prop Cirrus can fly. What you're looking for? I'm hearing a high pitch squeal that I wasn't hearing before. Sometimes when an alternator is starting to go, the bearings will start squealing a little bit or the belt is squealing. Used planes are like used cars. You never know when a critical part will pack it in. It never fails. Over, over the water, or flying at night, start hearing every little bump and thump. Push it 11,000 kilometers in just six days, and you're asking for trouble. 
It's very simple. If it doesn't sound right, doesn't smell right, doesn't feel right, something's wrong. If it is the alternator, a major source of their electrical power could be dying out. If the alternator it goes whoop into discharge, down you go and you're screwed. Hey, what do you need? Trouble like this demands serious focus. I want to put an autopilot and help with this mass for a minute. And at high altitude, Marcio needs extra oxygen to help him do it. Marcio's an airline pilot. He's not used to working at high altitude and in the thin air. Me, on the other hand, I skydive all the time. I fly unpressurized airplanes all the time. I live at high altitude. Kevin, there's no backup here for almost uh, anything, right? I mean, no backup for the engine. There's no backup for the power. Now, unfortunately, on the Cirrus, we don't have a backup system. If our uh, alternators go, all we have left is the juice that we've got in the battery, and once that's gone, it's gone. We can't wait to fix this on the ground. So my best solution is to reduce electrical power to things we don't need. Hopefully, that keeps the alternator from giving out. Whenever I'm flying over the ocean, I'm always trying to be as conservative with the engine and the electrical system as possible. When you turn off that, does the load change in here? It was 24, it went down to 12. So we're good for now. The tactic works. At 22,000 feet, even Kerry needs a little air. 190 knots, Poppy, we're still in the climb. How long do we have to go? Uh, almost two hours. Maybe I should test and see how my extreme high altitude performance is, you know. Go off O2 here for a little bit, see how I can hang. Uh, I'd rather not. Why don't you do your science classes when we are over farmland and uh, it's only water here. I don't want to be dealing with you. Pass out. I got you sitting right next to me. You're in good shape. Oh, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. They always have to be pushing the boundaries and the limits. I've been accused of being irresponsible and reckless, but I just thrive on this stuff. I could probably fly all day at 24,000 with no oxygen. Okay, okay. Well, all right. Let's, let's cross the water here and then... You can pass out, I can give you mouth to mouth, everybody can be happy. If I pass out, do you promise to give me mouth to mouth, give right? Give mouth to mouth. I want you to put a couple of mints in before, okay? No worries. Let's wait for Formland to do that. All right. Formland. Yeah, it's, uh, it's freaking cold up here. The temperature outside is minus 40 Celsius. This heater's having a hard time keeping up. At least we got a heater, but... It doesn't heat much. Look at my fingers. It's almost frozen. Yeah. Man, your fingertips are cold. No. Mini jet. Nicely pressurized. You have all the heaters. This never ever happens. Oh, we always fly, you know, just with a shirt. Nice tie. Looking for... You know? I look like a clown here. <laughs> We're not just for style. We're just for success. And by success, I mean survival. Oh, this is too cold. Yeah, can you imagine wanting to be down there in a raft? No fun, no fun at all. Oh, we're almost halfway. Almost halfway. Oh, in other words, we're about as far from rescue as we can be. waiting for the guys to come out so we can preheat it. There's no way this engine would start how cold it is. So we have to bring a truck with a heater. We're gonna put it in the inlet of the engine that'll warm up <coughs> and then cross our fingers, she'll start. How long do you think it'll take? Probably about half an hour. Half an hour? Yeah, and we can put it inside, so. inside the cabin too a little yeah, bit? Yeah, we can. Okay. Hard to tell which is colder the plane or the lightly dressed crew. Cowboy boots aren't made for the north. <laughs> yeah, they're a little on the dress. Hey, Corey, let's get the heater up on the wings and get that frost off, OK? Yeah, little dress shoes aren't going to cut it up here either. Yeah, these shoes are completely inappropriate for the weather and conditions we're in. They make no sense. 
So what are you wearing cowboy boots up here for? I wasn't planning on being outside for hours on end. It's warm when you're in the airplane. <laughs> <laughs> what it's running is. <laughs> well, right now we're heating and blowing off the frost. That thin layer on the wings and tail are very hazardous to the safety of flight. Doesn't look like much, but it'll take a plane out of the sky. Flying's very glamorous. Very glamorous. Don't I look glamorous right now? Yeah, now we gotta get in and get started so the plane doesn't get too cold. Because it'll get cold fast, even though we've been heating it for two hours. Flaps, well, I'm giving you 10. Cabin heat, come on, baby, warm up. It's cold as It is. All right, rotate 775, climb 85, 95. Good. Plane feels good. 1800 on the torque. Good. Wow. It's crazy. They're aiming for Greenland, 900 kilometers away. Over the next four hours, the giant-sized slushy that is the North Atlantic Ocean will be their only view. So how many times have you crossed the ocean? Um, without double-checking and adding it up, I think this is 645. <laughs> It's over 600 for certain. I still it's about how many hours I have flying. <laughs> <laughs> we just went feet wet over the Atlantic Ocean. We're not going to see land for many hours. Uh, got a little problem here, Marcio. Yeah. So we're about an hour off from Reykjavik, and the engine and the alternator seem to be doing OK. But now I have to freak Marcy out once again. I got to go pee-pee. No, there's no pee-pee here. Well, I got my old-fashioned uh, ferry pilot method here. Well, we didn't have to see this car. Two Ziploc bags. I learned the hard way, never trust one. You ready for this one? <laughs> information. I got a little shrinkage problem here. But <laughs> what the hell? It's been a while since I've had to do this. A little trickier than I thought. Oh, man. They have mission accomplished. Why me? No, why me? Alpha, continue present heading on altitude at 2,000 Okay, down to 2,000 feet and the present, uh, present heading. Approaching Iceland, the winds pick up. Feeling a couple bumps here and there. Shoving the lightweight Cirrus around. 537 Charlie Alpha Tower, Roger, join right down with runway 100, number 1 runway 100. Okay, man, do it. It's agreed. The single prop pro oh, well, will take this landing. Okay. Down, slow down, slow down. We're ready to close. Oh, we we're just going 120 pounds. <laughs> Let me help. Oh, wait, that way. We're still a little high. I know, I know. When you're trying to concentrate on a difficult landing, having a nervous co pilot question everything you do definitely doesn't help. Turn it, turn it. You're good to go now. Turn it. I can see anything. Keep, 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 keep coming, keep coming. Lean back. Lean back. Let me see what I'm doing. It's a rough ride when the pilots are as temperamental as the weather. Altitude. Clown. Do a little high, a little fast. I'll put the power back, let's see what happens a little bit. A little bit below, but it should be. I'm coming up. Uh, Fly instrument. Fly instrument. Yep. Now hammered by crosswinds. Marcio trusts the plane's computer to guide them in. Okay, approach flaps here. Follow their, follow their bar, follow their bar. Oh, you're a little low. So I got it, I got it. I do. 500. But Kerry trusts nothing but his own two eyes. Oh, flaps, flap. I'm a little fast because it's a little windy and bumpy. I'll do that. Oh, yeah, I'm so glad you're doing this. <laughs> ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Lots of emotions. 
was rough, Lumpy. I almost decided to just go with the 50% flaps. I would have made it easier, but I wanted a challenge. Eight. Ah. I don't know why I do this, really. Ah. After three and a half hours, oh, I can barely feel anything. This is, I don't know why I do this. This is a bad idea, Kerry. If you can't carry this, you're going to wear idea, the suits Carrie. and use the raft. You've got to know how to do it. Yet? Flying around the North Atlantic with survival gear that you're not really trained to use is not really the smartest thing in the world. I do have the gear. I've used it a lot, but I've never actually trained with it and received proper training. And in the far North Atlantic, this is where you get it. Let's go. So you are uh, exercising now uh, uh, trash in Icelandic waters or northern waters, yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, in the water where the cold sea is attacking you, uh, this suit is your protective shield for six hours. This team gets up to 25 calls a year to pull people from this ocean. So now you're going to put on your boots. They know what it takes to survive it. Inshore water here now is uh, three degrees, and we call that warm for this season. So. So just look forward and go out. I got to show uh, Marcia here how it's done. OK. Ah, beautiful. This is a bad idea. <laughs> oh, man. All right, here we go. The biggest fear is the water, the cold water. How long is it going to take for them to come and get us? That's the problem. And now you want to get on board. So first one, uh, just start pulling yourself up and on board. OK? I'm fine, Mauricio. <laughs> OK, now let's go out and see if we can find some waves. Ready to go do this, Marcio? Why not, baby? OK. The drift between them is because uh, one went out before the other one, thinking uh, the plane would be still, but the plane is moving. In reality, it's a potentially deadly mistake, losing track of each other and their rescue raft. And so they have to swim this far to get each other. Now I want you to swim to watch. They are getting very tired. Look. All right, Marcio. I'm done with this. Down and up. That's hard. They're down and up. See? This is good. All right. I told you this was a bad idea. That just reaffirms my belief that I never want to crash. That's hard work. And it's cold. Uh, my wife just sent me a little video of home from last night, so I'm going to watch my little girl, what, what she was doing here. Let me see. <laughs> oh, boy. I wish I was there. When I was going to survival training, it's really an amazing eye and opener how dangerous these things are. You know, we fly in the United States, and there's an airport every 20 miles, and there's an infrastructure behind it, and here, there's nothing. It's you are on your own.
just 1,000 kilometers away in Greenland. Hasta la vista, snow. Corey's a one-man ground crew. What are you doing? <laughs> Is it working? Yeah, take a look. Well, that's tough to say. I'm worried about the frost. What do you think, boss? I think we have to de-ice. Do you guys have a de-ice truck? And I do know these shoes were a dumb idea. <laughs> OK. Down to business. Looks like we're going to need de-icing after all. Shouldn't be a problem, but it's going to cost at least 700 to 900 US. That hurts. We don't need a lot. We just need a little bit. <laughs> The margins are so tight on these trips that we have to watch every single dollar. There's a good chance we can lose money before the plane even gets there if all these expenses get out of hand. Wow. All right, well, I guess 750 bucks to stay alive is probably worth it. Yeah. The hundreds are flying out of this bag. Carrie's daughter, Claire, is wired to try her hand at her dad's day job. Hey, Dad. Hey, Claire. What's going on? Just sitting here in uh, Iceland, getting ready for the big Iceland to Greenland leg. This is the big leg. This is the most dangerous one. Yeah. How long is that going to be? Uh, with the winds we have today, just a little over four hours. It's a long stretch of ocean. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah, I wouldn't want to be taking you on this one. I'd be a little, I'd be a nervous wreck. Oh, come on. I could handle this. <laughs> Claire is just like your old man, an adventurer, you know. <laughs> she likes to see the far horizons. And I'm kind of liking the fact that she's learning something from the trip that I'm on. And I've never really done it this late in the year, so, so it's... it's like extra cold right now? Yeah, extra cold, extra cruddy. Look out the ramp. <laughs> Talk to mom about that, or...? No, I don't bother your mother with uh, little details like that. No, I wouldn't. You better survive this adventure so we can go on ours. <laughs> I'll do what I can. You got it, Dad. Double guns. Double guns, Claire. <laughs> Talk to you later. All right, good luck. Be safe. Love you, bye. Love you, bye. It's so late in the year, and he seems a little concerned with the weather conditions right now, so when my dad gets concerned, I get a little concerned. Sucks. One time zone away, Corey's got a call to make too. My little boy should be getting ready or heading to school right now, try and say hi to him before he goes. This business is tough on the home life. Right now, I'm just finalizing my divorce, and you know, it's always in my mind. My family, my divorce. Hey, Jackson, what are you doing, buddy? Nothing. Guess what? I'm going to go across the ocean today, and I'll call you tonight when I oh. land, OK, buddy? Love you. Love you, too, buddy. Have a good day at school. I'll call you tonight, OK? Thanks, Dad. Bye, buddy. Love you. Let's go say that. It's very distracting when your personal life is off key, and he's got a divorce going on, and he has to keep that out of the cockpit. Roger that. He has to be on his game because those distractions are huge. And ready for Texas. 388 Limbo Tango. He's got a business, and he has people and stresses. Power set. Speed to live. But none of it matters if you're dead. Outstanding. Next time on Dangerous Flights. That could put us in the water. Pounded by headwinds. And is this going to work? Corey's in the hot seat. This decision's right on the line. Don't hit that mountain. Don't hit that mountain. Marcio takes on one of the world's most notorious runways. Oh, this is bad. 
What time is it? It's late. And no help for a hangover. They are all over our butts to get out of here now.